Imagine going to a birthday party, right? And instead of celebrating the person's birthday that you're there to celebrate, imagine if you show up and you ask everybody at the party, where are my presents? What if you made that birthday party all about yourself? So I think that's what we do at Christmas time. We show up to Jesus' birthday, gathered around the tree, and it ends up being a free-for-all where we're all just trying to gather more stuff, more gifts. And so I want to just reflect. Instead of talking about our own personal spirituality and how we grow as followers of Christ, over the next couple of weeks, I want to talk about Him. I want to direct our attention to Him. You know, something that we do in my house as a tradition is we bake a birthday cake for Jesus. We put candles on it. We sing him happy birthday. The kids get to blow out the candles. And we just make sure that the focus is not on the gifts. So the kids give away a lot of their toys to the poor. And yeah, they might receive some gifts. There might be some presents that they get. But we point out just how strange it is that on Jesus' birthday, we're the ones getting the gifts. And isn't that the story of the gospel? This idea that we're the ones that receive all the benefits from the sacrifice he made. When we celebrate Jesus, um, I just want us to pay attention to who he is. I want the focus to be on him. I want us to learn more about the goodness of the Lord. So this week, let me direct you to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2. It says, There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. And there is no rock like our God. So the first thing I want us to be reminded of about God is His holiness might even be the most important thing about God. I mean, he told Moses, I can't show myself to you or you'll like basically explode. See, our our imperfections, our weaknesses, our flaws before a holy God are incompatible. Right? God is so holy and so perfect that our wickedness and our sin cannot be in his presence. We would die. We would surely die. Now you see his holiness when Moses goes up on the mountain and he's making the tablets with the Ten Commandments. And when he comes down, he has to put a veil over his face because the holiness of God is attached to him. It clings to him. And so in order to not freak everyone out because his face is literally glowing, like Homer Simpson Uh, when he gets exposed to radiation. So he's got to put a veil over his face to protect the people from the glow, right? So think about the holiness of God. Think about the fact that Jesus walked as a human and he did it perfectly without sin. Think about the holiness of God the Father. He's perfect. Literally without flaw. Man, isn't that a God that we should desire to know and to serve and to pursue? So, for Christmas, let's just think about the holiness and the perfection of God. And then think about how that perfect God humbled himself and came down to mingle with us. Now, I've talked to people from other religions around the world, and one thing I've heard again and again and again, from Islam, from Judaism, Muslims will tell you, there's no way our holy God would ever belittle himself to the point where he'd come down as a human. A nasty, nasty human. One of the main differences between Christianity and other religions is this idea that our perfect holy God, literally perfect, humbled himself and came down 
And, and he didn't come down as a warrior king who conquers Rome and sits on the throne and puts his feet up and enjoys the lavish lifestyle that he deserves. No, he was born into a family where everyone from the outside looking in would say that Mary and Joseph had sex before marriage and that's how she got pregnant, even though Jesus was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. It, it, it was perceived that there was a child born out of wedlock, all right? And then he wasn't born on silk sheets in a nice, right, clean environment. He was born in a manger, probably in a trough that was used for animals to drink out of. You think about it, anybody here who's ever grown up around animals, a trough, what do you do when you touch the edge of that trough. It's slimy from all the spit and saliva and bacteria and mold and fungus and all this jet. He was born in a place where the ground was covered in straw and feces, manure, poop. He chose a holy, perfect God, chose to come down here and literally be born into the most humble of circumstances the Bible says there's a great curse. To be hung on a tree is the worst curse. And he chooses to be killed by being hung on a tree. So he chooses the worst possible death. Like Jesus chose the most humble of every option throughout his life. So imagine a holy, perfect God that does all of that because he loves you. Isn't that worth celebrating? So I want you to try. This is my challenge for you this week. Get your focus off yourself. Put your focus on him. And see how it changes you. And what I want you to do specifically is I want you to think about how he is holy. Look it up in the dictionary. What does holy mean? Study that word. Figure out what holy really means. To some of you, it's just a churchy word. Christianese, okay? Study that word. Go look at what holy means. Go look at what perfect means. See how God is perfect, and then think about what a perfect God was willing to do to rescue you. And now we're going to begin to scratch the surface on what it means to celebrate Christmas, and celebrate the birth of Emmanuel, which means God with us. Perfect, holy God, come down with us. He's with us. <laughs> it's crazy. That's my challenge for you this week. I love you to pieces. Hope y'all are doing well. God bless you. Bye-bye.